Michael James Burry is an American investor, hedge fund manager, and physician. He founded the hedge fund Cyan Capital, which he ran from 2000 until 2008, before closing the firm to focus on his own personal investments. Burry is best known for being the first investor to foresee and profit from the subprime mortgage crisis that occurred between 2007 and 2010. Chapter 1 Early Life and Education Michael Burry was born and grew up in San Jose, California. At the age of two he lost one of his eyes to cancer and has had an artificial eye ever since. As a teenager, Burry attended Santa Teresa High School. Burry studied economics and pre-med at the University of California, Los Angeles, went on to earn an MD from the Vanderbilt University School of Medicine, and started but did not finish his residency in neurology at Stanford University Medical Center. While off duty at night, Burry worked on his hobby, financial investing. Despite not practicing, Burry has kept his license as a physician active with the Medical Board of California, including continuing education requirements. Chapter 2 Investment Career After medical school, Burry worked as a Stanford Hospital neurology resident, and then a Stanford Hospital pathology resident. Burry then left to start his own hedge fund. He had already developed a reputation as an investor by demonstrating success in value investing which he wrote about on message boards on the stock discussion site Silicon Investor beginning in 1996. He was so successful with his stock picks that he attracted the interest of companies such as Vanguard, White Mountains Insurance Group and prominent investors such as Joel Greenblatt. Murray has a strictly traditional understanding of value. He has said more than once that his investment style is built upon Benjamin Graham and David Dodd's 1934 book Security Analysis, All My Stock Picking is 100% based on the concept of a margin of safety. After shutting down his website in November 2000, Burry started the hedge fund Cyan Capital, funded by an inheritance and loans from his family. The company was named after Terry Brooks's The Cyan's of Shannara, one of his favorite novels. Burry quickly earned extraordinary profits for his investors. According to the author Michael Lewis, in his first full year, 2001, the S&P 500 fell 11.88%. Cyan was up 55%. Burry was able to achieve these returns by shorting overvalued tech stocks at the peak of the internet bubble. The next year, the S&P 500 fell again, by 22.1%, and yet Cyan was up again, 16%. The next year, 2003, the stock market finally turned around and rose 28.69%, but Mike Burry beat it again, his investments rose by 50%. By the end of 2004, Mike Burry was managing $600 million and turning money away. In 2005, Burry started to focus on the subprime market. Through his analysis of mortgage lending practices in 2003 and 2004, he correctly predicted that the real estate bubble would collapse as early as 2007. Burry's research on the values of residential real estate convinced him that subprime mortgages, especially those with teaser rates, and the bonds based on these mortgages, would begin losing value when the original rates were replaced by much higher rates, often in as little as two years after initiation. This conclusion led Burry to short the market by persuading Goldman Sachs and other investment firms to sell him credit default swaps against subprime deals he saw as vulnerable. This analysis proved correct, and Burry profited accordingly. During his payments toward the credit default swaps, Burry suffered an investor revolt where some investors in his fund worried his predictions were inaccurate and demanded to withdraw their capital. Eventually, Burry's analysis proved correct, he earned a personal profit of $100 million and a profit for his remaining investors of more than $700 million. Cyan Capital ultimately recorded returns of 489.34% between its November 1, 2000 inception and June 2008. The S&P 500, widely regarded as the benchmark for the U.S. market, returned just under 3%, including dividends over the same period. According to his website, 
Burry liquidated his credit default swap short positions by April 2008 and did not benefit from the bailouts of 2008 and 2009. He subsequently liquidated his company to focus on his personal investment portfolio. In an April 3, 2010 op ed for the New York Times, Burry argued that anyone who studied the financial markets carefully in 2003, 2004, and 2005 could have recognized the growing risk in the subprime markets. He faulted federal regulators for failing to listen to warnings from outside a closed circle of advisors. In 2013, Burry reopened his hedge fund, this time called Cyan Asset Management, filing reports as an exempt reporting advisor, who is active in the state of California and approved by the SEC. Burry has focused much of his attention on investing in water, gold, and farmland. Burry has been quoted saying fresh, clean water cannot be taken for granted. And it is not, water is political, and litigious. At the end of the 2015 biographical dramedy film The Big Short, a statement regarding Burry's current interest reads, the small investing he still does is all focused on one commodity, water. Glimpses were offered into Cyan's portfolio with 13 Fs filed from the fourth quarter of 2015, through the third quarter of 2016, as required by the SEC, when fund holdings top $100 million. After more than two years, on February 14, 2019, Cyan Asset Management filed another 13 F, showing Michael Burry to hold numerous large cap stocks and $103,528,000 13 F assets under management, just above the threshold for filing. In August 2019, Bloomberg News quoted an email from Burry stating his belief that there was a bubble in large U.S. company stocks due to the popularity of passive investing, which has often smaller value type securities globally. The biggest investments are Alphabet Incorporated and Facebook from Burry in 2020. Burry initiated short position on Tesla before or around early December 2020, according to a now deleted tweet and likely added to his short positions after the market cap of Tesla surpassed that of Facebook. Burry predicts Tesla stock will collapse like the housing bubble. He boasted that my last big short got bigger and bigger and bigger and taunted Tesla bulls to enjoy it while it lasts. Burry currently holds long puts on 800,100 shares of Tesla. Chapter 3 Political Views Burry was highly critical of the COVID 19 pandemic lockdowns. Chapter 4 Personal Life Burry is married, with children, and currently lives in Saratoga, California. His son was diagnosed with Asperger syndrome and Burry believes he himself has Asperger's syndrome after reading about the disorder. Chapter 5, In Popular Culture Chapter 5 Section 1, Film 2015, The Big Short, A Biographical Drama Burry is portrayed by Christian Bale. Bale was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor among other honors for his portrayal. Chapter 5 Section 2, Literature 2010, Michael Lewis, The Big Short 2009, Gregory Zuckerman, The Greatest Trade Ever 